Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in Springfield at Oak Ridge Cemetery in front of Lincoln's tomb, which by the way, just reopened to the public after having been closed for repairs for a period of time. When you come out here to look at Lincoln's tomb again, you might want to stand under the framing oak. A lot of people take pictures of the tomb here. Now that's only one reason why this oak tree is important because it sort of starts a tour of important trees here at Oak Ridge Cemetery. And Guy Sternberg, it's interesting that the, uh, that the foundation, the cemetery and the, and the Oak Ridge Foundation found you and thought, what a cool idea to talk about and to show the trees that are, that are really significant about this cemetery, aren't they? Yes, it, actually we've been planning these tree tours for some time. I've been working out here for decades. But we thought we were going to, we'll be having opportunities with these picnics and so forth that we have here to showcase some of this. So the very first 12 trees that we're going to be showing people as part of this tour are, they start with the framing lot that we see right here. Mm -hmm. And each of these trees has significance because of its size or its age or its association with, association with historical events. And they are, some of them are oak, some of them are other things. Of course, this is Oak Ridge Cemetery, so we're starting with an oak. And this mm -hmm. oak actually was one of the saplings that was here when Lincoln was buried. Is here. that right? It's one of the original white oak trees. Okay, so they planted this in, uh, in uh, about well, 1865, it, it, it wasn't planted. I guess. It was there. This was, oh, it, was it would have been a brushy field that they had logged, and then mm -hmm. some young trees grew up. So this was a spontaneous tree that came in on its own. It was probably about four inches in diameter. Uh, when Lincoln was buried, and that's mm -hmm. based upon other trees that I've seen and, and we've had to cut down because they were dead and I've looked at the rings and figured out how big they were at the time uh -huh. the cemetery was founded, which was you know just before 1860. So it's about 150 years old? Roughly, yeah. yeah. Is that old for an oak tree? Uh, is 70 old for a human? You know, it's, it's a yes and no answer. <laughs> okay. uh, they can live several hundred years, mm -hmm. but obviously they have problems with lightning and foot traffic and a lot sure. of other things, so not all of them live that old. But yeah. this, this could go on another couple hundred years easily if it, if no it goes kidding. right with the And tree. it's a white yeah. oak. It's a white oak. When Illinois we, State tree. As we go through this tour with you, you're going to show us most of those 12 trees and describe to us what makes that tree significant or important or histi historically significant or big. I mean, some mm -hmm. of these trees are immense too, they, right? They are. So that's how you choose them. You choose, they, they have some significance that people will find interesting. This framing oak is interesting because of its age and because people use it as a photographic aid to the tomb. It just sure. fits perfectly, it's, doesn't it's it? It's one of the most visible, highly photographed trees in the cemetery because Lincoln's tomb is here. Mm -hmm. And as you drive up the road to the tomb, you look under this oak and you see that tree, or you see that tomb. Yeah. And a lot of times when you have other trees that are flowering here, you get a really beautiful view in the right kind of lighting just using the oak to, to frame your picture. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, we, we've, uh, we've visited this gorgeous 150-year-old tree. Um, let's let's continue the tour, huh? Okay, well, let's, let's move follow on. those kids, by the way. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Guy, we have moved down the hill. Oh, maybe only about 50 yards or so, because uh, there's a, there's a species here called overcup oak, which I had never heard of before. I guess there aren't a lot of those around here, are there? Well, you haven't heard of it because it's not native here. You know, uh -huh. it's from the swamps of deep southern Illinois and all the way down into the, the Gulf Coast area. Uh, but it never grows on high ground and it never grows naturally this far north. If you plant them from a northern source, they'll make it. Sometimes they're a little bit troubled by our severe winters like this last winter, but they'll make it okay. Uh, but this tree and others at New Salem are all over cup oaks. They all were probably, I would guess, planted in the 1930s when they were restoring New Salem and they were re actually rebuilding and, and re refitting Lincoln's oh, tomb. Okay. And I think some enterprising person went down to Lincoln's home well, Lincoln's birthplace, mm -hmm. where these trees actually do grow wild, and they brought back some acorns and planted them here to celebrate oh, okay. Lincoln's. Okay, so these are Kentucky trees planted up here in the north. They don't like it that's, that much. That's Although, right. I'm, well, I don't want to say the most healthiest looking trees in the world, but they've, they're big. They've done okay. Yeah. yeah, once in a while in a really bad winter or a really late spring freeze or early fall freeze, you'll have some trunk damage, and that's what some of those cracks are that you see there. But they, they heal over that and they mm -hmm. grow okay. Mm -hmm. And we don't know that they came from Kentucky, but I think no one can come up with a better reason why we would see these here, mm -hmm. totally out of range, totally out of habitat, and yet they're here and, and they look like part of the natural landscape, don't they? Yeah, yeah, fascinating. And they're just pups compared to the uh, to the framing oak over there. These are, what, 70 years old? Yeah, these are about 80, 80? If, if our theory is right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the framing oak is twice that old. 
And of course, these tend to grow more rapidly because they generally grow in lower moisture soil. So here, all bits are off. We just don't know. <laughs> but this well, guy on the lower part of the cemetery, down near the maintenance shed, there's a monstrous cottonwood tree. And what you and the group have done here is we can see the cabling up among the leaves. This is a vulnerable tree. It, it, it could go apart in a big storm, couldn't it? Right, any, any tree this size has survived a lot. But if you notice, there are three main trunks that ascend. And if you get a heavy ice load or a strong gust of wind, something unusual, it could pull those apart. And once you split off a tree like this, it's dead. So the tree has stood for, who knows, 150 years. We don't really know its age yeah. without help. But as they get older and bigger and slow down in growth, you want to add some of the structural reinforcement just to give it a little extra edge. Yeah. And each of these cables is a 10,000 pound weight testing. Wow. So we can give this tree just enough to prevent that ice storm that might have just taken it down last year from mm -hmm. taking it down this year. The, the co cottonwood trees are soft, right? So, so they're cottonwood vulnerable soft, to like wind storms and, and all that sort of thing. And area. decay. They do decay easily. And uh -huh. you'll notice this one has had a lightning strike and it does have some hollow areas. So yeah. when, when we're doing this, we're trying to compensate for that. And you can't hold the tree up with the cable, but you can give it that little extra edge, that little extra reinforcement. Yeah. yeah. Like this, me with a bad knee walking with a cane. You know? <laughs> <laughs> now, this, you're an arborist, and you know a lot of, you know all the arborists around here. Pre people pretty much agree this is the biggest tree in Springfield, isn't that right? Well, I've been working with trees in Springfield since 1970, and yeah, I do know a lot. A lot of the arborists I've worked with have retired over the past years. None of them have ever pointed out a tree that's come close to this. Yeah. Uh, it's 23 feet 5 inches around the trunk, 96 feet tall. Oh That's with a clinometer reading. I uh -huh. forget the branch spread, but it's 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 large. It's impressive. I'm I'm sure probably New Lincoln. Uh, we don't know <laughs> how much older. Some trees this size date to the 1840s. There uh -huh. are there is one out in the Dakotas uh, that Lewis and Clark camped under that's still there today. Uh huh. So that tree is over 300 years old, and, and we just don't know. 23 feet around at the base. That's remarkable. It's big. If you walk it around it, I'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> and these, they call these these big uh, lumps that grow on the bark, those are burls? Yeah, these are burls. They're just an atypical growth, and you're like a wart on your face. Uh -huh. And something stimulates the, the uh, tree to grow it in, in, a, in a different way than normal, and those burls just keep growing. Now, the same vascular system that goes from the wrist up to the top goes up, but when it hits the burl, it kind of circles around and, th and then goes up. Uh -huh. And they just keep on growing that way. They're, they're a beautiful you know, piece of art to me. And when trees come down, a lot of wood carvers will take those and they want to salvage the burl and, and turn them into bowls and, and pieces of art yeah. and things like that. Yeah. But it just gives the tree character. Sure you does. Know, it's, it's that little wart on its face that says, yeah, I'm me. <laughs> well, this is a remarkable tree. Well, Guy, back in 1865, when they brought Mr. Lincoln here to bury him before they started his tomb, that's the original vault where the body was kept until they got his tombs completed. Right. Um, and down here on this level, it's interesting because there's the, the, original, the original entrance to the cemeteries on this level, and we can see it over there. They're, they're rebuilding that as well for the procession in, uh, in 2015. So right between there and the vault, people likely would have gone by this tree and it would have been very small it, if it, it was here at all, right? Been planted. It would have been a sapling or a seedling. Uh -huh. A lot of these trees were planted in the 1860s. Uh, those that are ornamental, this, this is native to Illinois, but not native to this part of Illinois. So it would have been planted. It's possible that it was the understock of a graft. They might have planted a flowering magnolia that was grafted onto this tree. The graft died and the tree came up and, and, and grew. Yeah. You know, no one knows. Uh, but this tree is very old. It's one of the largest, it's probably the second largest in, in the county, uh, as far as I know. And it's definitely got the best form. It has yellowish flowers, and it's our, our one native magnolia tree in I'll Illinois. Be there. You know, most people, when they think, I, at least me, when I think of magnolia trees, they, they hang very low, and they've got a mm. lot of foliage, that deep green, like kind of leathery foliage. Right. But not, not shaped like this. No, this is a forest tree. And there, there are very few magnolias that will reach the forest canopy. This. In his native Appalachian areas where it's really happy, it can grow twice as big in diameter, 120 feet tall. It's just like an oak out there. Uh -huh. But if you look up, it's got the magnolia leaves, and then you look close, he got magnolia flowers. And in the center of the flower is a little structure that's the cucumber. It looks like a pickle. It's a seed pod. Yeah. It's a follicle, they call it. And some of the seeds are pollinated, some aren't, so it kind of twists and turns like this as you look at it. And it reminds you of a little cucumber. Do they something. call it a cucumber tree? They call it a cucumber tree for that reason. Yeah. <laughs> well, I heard that term, but I didn't know it was a magnolia. It was. Yeah. I'll be darned. Okay. 
So this, this, uh, this, you said this is maybe the second largest tree in the county. Is that all, of all magnolia trees, or yeah, all, yeah all the, magnolia these trees? would by far be the largest magnolia trees. The species would. Mm -hmm. Most of them are ornamental. They're smaller. They're Asian. You know, they might get a foot yeah. or two in diameter. You know, this this has this beautiful central trunk form. There's another one on the east side of town that's more like a live oak. It's sort of spreading out, so it has uh -huh. a wider crown spread. Uh, but yeah, they can get huge, and this could live another couple hundred years. Wow. And they're really large yeah. yet. It's beautiful. But it's, it's in such a prominent location with, you know, the funeral procession passing right by here. Everybody yeah. that is involved with Lincoln is going to be seeing this tree, yeah. probably wondering what it is, because it is unusual, especially when it's blooming. So we're going to put the plaque here. We're going to have this one of the tree tour trees so that people can actually see it, read about it. You can click on the QR code on this plaque, and it will bring up a web page about the tree. Every tree has its own QR code, its mm -hmm. own, own web page. And eventually we'll have perhaps up to 300 trees in the cemetery that are marked that way for various reasons. That's great. They're big, they're old, they're rare, they have associated with history. Something is special about yeah. each of these that we'll put in this tour. Well, Guy, we're still in the lower part of the cemetery near the old main entrance. And uh, this is where a series of the original trees were planted. Some of them pine trees, like the one we're looking right. at here. Yeah, they, uh, if I looked at the Board of Managers minute books for 1862, they appropriated some money for the sexton of the cemetery, the manager of the cemetery, to go to Phoenix Nursery in Bloomington, Illinois, to buy what they called evergreens to mm -hmm. beautify the grounds of the cemetery. Because of course, this is a deciduous forest, and if you're in a cemetery, you want to have evergreen because that's the tree of everlasting life. Oh, so they bought okay. pines and spruces and hemlocks, and we know this because of the few trees that are left, and we can see what they are. Uh, this particular tree was a white pine, and it grew to be 100 plus feet tall, Lightning struck it a number of decades ago, and you can kind of see part of the streak from that lightning cell on the trunk. Yeah. And at that point, when the lightning struck it, it hit the very top of the tree, that terminal bud mutated, and it formed what's called a witch's broom, or just a very dense canopy of growth. Uh huh. And that witch's broom became as big as a couple of Volkswagens. It just shielded the whole top of the tree. Mm -hmm. And a friend of mine climbed the tree for me. He took <laughs> some sign wood, some, some twigs. Mm -hmm. We managed to get another friend to graft one, which we have now at Star Hill Forest Arboretum. And a couple of years later, the tornadoes that came through Springfield took the top out of this tree, and the broom was lost. Uh -huh. So now if you look at the top of the tree, you'll see it's regrowing, but it's no longer a witch's broom form. It's trying to establish its, its traditional mm -hmm. upright erect form again. Uh, but this tree, because it came from Phoenix Nursery in Bloomington, and because of the, the broom was more or less born out of the fire of the lightning strike, we're calling it Phoenix. So it's the Phoenix pine. Uh, we'll be propagating that, and people will have like garden railroads or rock gardens that want to have little dwarf evergreens, yeah. but they want to have some history. You know, this is what they would plant. Because, now, you, know, you did some still. research to find out too, and, and you actually found the paperwork that this did come from the Bloomington Nursery. Right. And that Bloomington Nursery is still in operation, isn't it? It is. It was called Phoenix Nursery back then, but it was in Bloomington. And if you look in the Presidential Museum's uh, library, uh, the Presidential Library, I should say, you can find some of the old catalogs from that nursery, including the uh -huh. 1862 catalog that these came from. Mm -hmm. And then you look at the Cemetery Board of Managers minutes, and you can piece together. They spent $93 and odd cents for all the little evergreens that they bought here, which, wow. you know, at the time Lincoln was buried, <laughs> three years later, were about this tall. You can see a couple of them in the photographs of Lincoln's funeral. Mm -hmm. And in 1864, the year growing year before Lincoln was buried, they had grown about this much. In 1863, they'd grown about that much. In 1862 was when they were planted. They hadn't grown hardly at all because they were reestablishing their root yeah, system. Yeah. So you can piece it together, you know, tree CSI, we like to call it. Mm -hmm. You know when those trees were planted. We know from the board of managers when it came from. We know from the nursery catalog what they Neat. had and what they were sold for. Neat. Uh, yeah, there's all kinds of wonderful history if you just dig and look for it. Not, not all the trees survived. Um, this this burr oak down here was also planted near the entrance. It actually it was spontaneous. Oh, it, spontaneous. Yeah, that okay. was a sapling that, that grew up there. And uh, at the time of Lincoln's funeral, if you count the rings and look, it was about four inches in diameter. And they're, they're calling that the witness tree because it was a tree that witnessed Lincoln's funeral. Uh huh. And a few years ago, it was struck by lightning, and eventually the tree died from the lightning strike. It couldn't recover. It fried the root system. Uh, so when it was cut down, the wood has been saved, and the cemetery hopes to use the wood in some commemorative way. Uh -huh. And there's another local man who was working on trying to seal coat and protect the stump. And that's one of our tree tour trees, is a tree stump. Yeah, yeah. And and if you seal it correctly, that will last indefinitely. You... Not indefinitely. It'll last for a while. Eventually, uh -huh. decay will come from the bottom up. Yeah. But as long as it's there, if it lasts for another few generations of school kids, they can look at it, they can count rings, they can stand on it, they can maybe be inspired to get mm -hmm. interested in history or biology or botany or, or one of the natural or yeah. historical sciences just by 
force of having touched the tree that, that witnessed Lincoln's funeral. Yes. <laughs> Guy, we're still not far from that original entrance, right. uh, which is on the east side of the cemetery. And what they did back in 1865 was they, they planted a hedgerow, right. uh, which everybody was doing, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, hedgerows were, that, that was a way to, to do, um, do mar mark your property. Um, so these, uh, these are called or orange, Osage, Osage, Osage orange, orange or hedge apple tree hedge or apple hedge tree. tree. Yeah. yeah, they have a lot of names, Bodart, but they all came from areas along the Red River in Oklahoma and Texas and Arkansas because the glaciers pushed all the trees south. When the glaciers left, the mammals, the giant mammals that had to spread them from seeds, were extinct, and they had no way to re, you know reclaim their own former yeah. territory until we, our human species, brought them back. In the 1840s, Jonathan Baldwin Turner, one of the first professors at Illinois College, was looking for something he could plant for hedging because they, uh, we're turn, we were turning from an open, open range economy into a farm economy. You had to fence your property. And in the Great Plains, there weren't that many trees to make fences out of. And the few trees that were there, you'd make buildings out of. So he thought about the days back in England when they had hawthorns, which are a thorny little tree that you can make a hedge out of. Mm -hmm. He thought, well, here's Osage Orange. It typically has thorns. You can cut it, and it grows back vigorously. So in the 1840s, 50s, 60s, 70s, these trees were all planted due to his promotion throughout the Midwest. Every quarter mile, you'd have a, a hedge of Osage orange trees. And in Kansas alone, they had 39,000 miles of Osage orange. Oh my goodness. It was the most planted tree and yeah. probably still is in North America. Yeah. And, and in your research, you found, again, you found the paperwork that these were purchased. Right. Uh, and, and so you know when they were planted, where they were purchased from, and what they yeah, paid we, for them. Well, we, we know the day that the Board of Managers approved planting a hedge to, mm -hmm. to wall off the grounds of the cemetery. It was in mm -hmm. 1865, the year Lincoln was shot. And what's interesting about this particular tree, uh, and there was a whole row of these just across the fence that went down. You can still see some of the stumps. But this particular one you see has male flowers, so it's a male tree. It will never have hedge apples. Mm -hmm. And also, it's thornless. Most of these trees have half-inch thorns. You can't do this without ripping right. the canopy apart. But yeah. this one is thornless. We're actually going to propagate this tree, and probably name it. And and you know, for those who are interested in trees with history, obviously this is a tree with history. Yeah. It won't have a hedge apple litter problem. It won't have a thorn problem. You can plant it in your yard, and have a piece of, of yeah. original history from yeah. Springfield. Well, these trees aren't all these these canopy trees, and they're not all these big hardwood trees. Some of them are sort of stretching out kinds of trees. I, I, and I've never mm -hmm. seen this tree before. Well, they're, they're kind of unusual. To me, any, any, a tree is anything you can stand under. And you can stand <laughs> under these, no matter how many trunks they have. You know, it starts out as a shrub. Uh -huh. now, this is American smoke tree. And unlike the common European smoke bush that you see that has the purple leaves and so forth, this is a native North American tree. Uh -huh. It gets larger. It has beautiful, brilliant fall color. And if you look closely on the ends of these branches, that's the smoke. You know, they have these flower clusters, these panicles that come out. Uh -huh. And they have little tiny flowers on them, and then when they mature, they'll have little seeds that are where the flowers are, and you'll have that smoke all summer and into the fall. Well, let's take a little closer look. Okay. We can walk up to one, and we can actually see the seeds. Now, these these wouldn't grow around here unless somebody brought them in and planted right. them. Right, they're not native here. Uh, they will grow if you put them in a dry, sunny site, uh -huh. and they're perfectly hardy here. You can grow them all the way up into Minnesota, but in nature, they low grow on limestone outcrops. You know, plays with a high pH soil and very well drained soil. And I've seen them in northern Alabama, Tennessee, Texas, and they, so they, forth. You, they got to be in a dry location. They want to be in a dry, well drained location. And here we're on the summer. side of a hill, so it's well drained here. Right, and it's a west facing slope, so you have, you know, this, the heat of the day will dry everything out here. Mm -hmm. And if you look at these flowers, little, little tiny flowers, I don't know if you can get that in the camera or not, but at the bases of some of these flowers, the ones that are pollinated, have a little seed that's about a, a tenth of an inch in mm -hmm. diameter, a little, little like a hard bean. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes the next generation of smoke trees. Mm -hmm. But these are also interesting because if there's a problem and a branch breaks or, or is cut, it'll just send up a new trunk. Well, you can so see these, that. I mean, if you there, there must be do, there are dozens sure. of trunks here, yeah. and some of the old ones, some of the you can see Various in the middle, generations. they're just gone. Yeah, this this one might have been the original tree that might have been cut, you know, 70, 80 years ago. Yeah. Here's a branch that came later that was cut. You can see that's not quite as decayed as that one. Yeah. These are still alive. If somebody has a problem with one of these and cuts it, it will send up more. You can see new ones coming right now. Yeah. And this foliage, in the fall, you have to come back and wear your sunglasses. Because it's this, that beautiful. This, oh, it is just brilliant. So what's yeah. it turn, gold? It turns a, a reddish, orange. Sometimes they're mottled and the veins of the leaf are one color and, and the rest of the leaf is another color. And they will vary. Some are almost purplish. Most of them are bright orangey red. Uh, just like fire, just like flames. So it's very hard, too, because of this way it grows, to tell how old it is, I guess. You can't tell. Yeah, <laughs> you can tell how old a limb is, but is this uh -huh. the original trunk? No. 
And maybe that wasn't even the original trunk, that dead one. Maybe that was a sprout from an earlier one. Yeah. It could be hundreds of years old underground. This one is probably, you know, 70 or 80 years yeah. old above yeah. ground, but we don't really know that. Yeah. The, these are big for smoke trees, aren't they? They are. They, as far as I know, they're the biggest ones in Springfield. Uh, they may be a bigger one someplace because they kind of go on those until they have fall color. Yeah. Guy, we have been looking at older trees that are on the present tree tour. But fact is, many of the younger trees here that which started out at your arboretum have been planted here and are now starting to thrive and they will become trees of the future tours, right? Right, and that's actually where it started. Uh, we've been working planting trees here and propagating for Oak Ridge for more than 20 years now and this is one of them. Uh, and we do have close to 300 of these trees scattered around the grounds. We will select some of those that are special in some way and put the same types of plaques and they'll be on the tree tours as well in the future. Yeah. Wait, um, what's the specimen we're looking at here? Well, this is Quercus petraea. It's the European, it's one of the common European oaks. This is the one they make wine barrels out of in, in Europe. Uh, it has a nice straight trunk. Uh, they also used to make ship bass and things like that during the days, the sailing days. But if you look close, you'll see that, that this leaf if you look in the leaf axle, you have a little acorn starting there. That's a little cluster of wow. acorns. And right over here, I just saw one. This, this is the male flower, the, the staminate catkin, which is, is done now, but it would hang down from, Hold from the Hold that real still like if that. you would. Okay, I see. And that's the flower. That's, right, that, the... that's the male flower. That makes the pollen, and then this little structure makes the acorn. Uh -huh. And typically, oaks are, you know, like this is ready before that is on any given tree, so they encourage cross pollination. But sometimes some of the pollen will overlap the female yeah. flower. Are, are there others of this and variety in Oak Ridge? There are a couple. Uh -huh. Yeah, we, we've planted trees from all over the world here. We've planted trees that we propagated from historic and special trees of various kinds, rare trees, hybrids. Uh, many of them are oak, not all of them. We have some other things as well. Yeah. But you'll see trees about this size and smaller that are all a part of this program. They, we propagated them. We helped the uh, cemetery develop a nursery right here on the ground. They were grown up to landscape size in the nursery. And then say your grandpa died and you were from Germany and you wanted to have a German oak tree planted by his grave and you had the space to do it, they could find a, a tree from Germany in the cemetery nursery and plant it there for you. I see. And we're keeping track of all these. We know where this tree came from, when it was planted, where I got the seed, and they will be part of, of this tree tour eventually. Yeah. Well, the first hickory I think we've seen. The first hickory, one of many. Yeah, really. The, yes. Now, of course, there are only 12 trees originally on the tour, but there will be many hickory trees many as more, well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And actually, this is Marconet hickory, and we've got quite a few of them on the cemetery grounds. We've lost a couple over the years. I've counted the rings. These all predate the cemetery. These all from the 1840s. So this is a, a really old tree. It's a beautiful fall color, you know, bright, bright orange, yellow fall color each year. It just highlights the tomb. If you go out in the lawn and take pictures of the tomb, you see this tree in the background. It just mm -hmm. sort of make, makes my day. It's just a, a beautiful specimen. Yeah. Uh, we're trying to propagate nuts off of this tree to make more for people. And if you look at, at the uh, branches here, you'll see these are our male hickory flowers again. Just like the oaks, they have these catkins. And little hickory nuts will form in the leaf axles. And there's, there's one starting right there. Can you see it? Sure enough, sure enough. It's so that, green right now. Yep, that will yeah. be a hickory nut this fall. Mm -hmm. And the squirrels will be happy, and so will we. Yeah. Now hickories, they are, are they are they native to this area? They are. These these were here before the cemetery was here, and they were part of the native forest. Mm -hmm. There are ten different kinds of hickories in Illinois. This is one of them. This likes the higher, drier ground, uh -huh. and they will live to be a really good old age, but they grow slowly. And most of their growth is underground for the first several years. If you take a hickory tree this big, the roots are enormous yeah but and, that, and unlike many of the trees that we've seen on this tour uh, where you could trace those back to where they bought them and when they bought them and what they paid for them how, where they came from these were boy from 1840 they were here so these right. probably were not planted by any white settlers nope these 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 were here they were part of the native forest mm -hmm. and I think most of Oak Ridge have been logged or cut at one time a lot of these trees were probably 10 20 30 years old at the time the cemetery was founded. Mm -hmm. There were a few older trees that show in the photos that are long gone now, but these all date back to, to that period. Yeah. Well, you know, for those folks who missed the tour, um, they, these are self-guided tours. And yes, if they, they are. didn't get the guided tour by yourself, what they can do is, in the future, there'll be brochures or some way for people mm -hmm. to self-guide them th through. In the meantime, you all have done this dynamite thing by making them accessible through your smartphone. Right. And if you have a smartphone, all you have to do is go over to this plaque, and each one of these plaqued trees has this very thing. 
It has the number of the tree right here, the registered number. This is the GPS code, which tells you the exact location of the tree, the species of the tree, and this little diagram right here is called the QR code. So if you want to find out more about this tree, you take your smartphone, you find your camera and you, your viewfinder there, and you tap it, you take a picture of that code, and then what happens is this website page comes up, and this is the mocker nut hickory, the very tree that we're talking about. And there's all this information that Guy's been telling us about each one of these trees. There's pictures in the fall, and it has a little bit of history of each tree. So what a way, what a great way to provide information without even having to uh, to, mm -hmm. to, uh, to to check in or anything. You just just find right. the trees. We're, and we're you're trying going. to reach people with the history, the biology, yeah. the, you know, the botany of it. Uh, school classes, people who are just out for a ride and want to yeah. see something interesting. We hope that it will inspire them to get more involved. Yeah. Well, Guy Sternberg, thank you so much for, for your efforts and, and everybody here at the cemetery and, mm -hmm. and with the State Historic uh, Sites. It's, been it's a terrific experience. It thank has you been. very much. It's a wonderful place. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Uh, for your next visit to Oak Ridge Cemetery, bring your smartphone, take a tour of the historic trees. With another Illinois story in Springfield, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.